Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So I'm absolutely delighted to not be in our usual environment, in our usual studio, and be in Dr. Tyle Stanford's lab here yeah. in Utah. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah, no, it's great to have you down here, show you some of the technology that I get to play with every day and uh, yeah. kind of see what's going on with your swing itself, right? This is a fun lab. And, and Mike Napoleon from Super Speed Golf, great to see you. Yeah, great to see you too. I think it's gonna be really fun because not only do we get to just talk about how your clubs are gonna be affecting yep. the ball, but we're gonna look at your entire body, all the biomechanics, force, all of it, and see what's going on. It's, uh, it's an exciting partnership, guys, in order for us to show you the value and not just addressing your golf clubs, we talk enough about your golf swing and, and your uh, sort of, you know, being fit and, and obviously taking lessons, but this is a, a kind of part of the, the player development that we feel really, really passionately about. We see, you know, some of the best players in the world implementing these processes and protocols, and you guys are working with a bunch of them. Obviously, Podrick Harrington being your, your sort of main ambassador, who's, mm -hmm. who's now uh, a big, big part of the Super Speed family. And I don't know if you could really have a better ambassador with what he's doing. I mean, I hate to say it, and it's not, it's not disrespectful, but at his age, yeah. he's, he's really kind of, going back in, in time. I mean, there's very few players that can still like, you know, hit those high 180s in ball speed over the age of 50. Incredible. And I mean, Padraig will do it with 50 balls in a row if you yeah. ask him. So, I mean, he's a, he's absolutely been a great part of our team. Really excited for a lot that he's doing. And I mean, honestly, a lot more that he's gonna do in the future. Yep. Guys, a big part of this project uh, I really want to emphasize is we want this to be about you guys and how these principles and protocols apply that you can apply to your own game. That's the most important thing here. Yeah, I'm going to be the guinea pig that we do this with and, and selfishly we'll look at my game, but we want you guys to watch these videos and learn through your own lens so that you can apply it to yourself because we understand the, the gains that we can give you in the bay. We're very confident that the clubs that we can put in your hands are going to help improve your game, but nothing is going to drive performance like you being a better version of you. You give me a, a, a faster swinging, more forceful version of yourself, and, and trust me, the, the gains that we can give you can be multiplied significantly. So, you know, we're going to have a lot of fun with this today, guys. We're going to look at my own baselines. Tyler, you and I have been chatting for a while, and, and you've been helping me with some speed stuff, and... Um, I love the off-season. I'm not going to lie. I mean, this this is the time of year, to be honest, I get most excited about it. I love playing golf, but secretly, I probably love working at golf a little bit more. And, and that's why I love a lab like this, because it, it's endless opportunity to work in my game and take it to that next level. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about getting you down here, a fellow data nerd, to really yeah. kind of dive into the weeds of everything we can look at in terms of force and motion and power and grip and kind of the whole nine yards for you. And yep. so, yeah, it's, it's been a long time coming. Definitely, definitely. There's, you guys have seen sort of my speed journey. Um, you know, for those of you who follow the channel, probably when we first started the channel, I was a, a 105 to 108 club speed guy. Peaked a couple of years ago at around 122, 125 and, and has subsequently came back down now. I live between kind of 110 and, and 114. Um, people ask me all the time, kind of what, what was it that kind of, allowed you at that time to get so fast and, and hit that peak. And, and I tell people all the time, it was, it was training with my super speed system. It was applying the, the principles that are no different from what are on the, the YouTube channel today, on the Super Speed Golf YouTube channel today. It was doing those religiously and then taking my own driver and you know just, just working away at that, just every day getting incrementally better. Yeah, I think something you said there is really great. I mean, the off season is a great time, and it's so much fun to work on your game. But it's really fun to work on your game when you're working on the right things, and that's what today is all about. And it's not as complicated as many people think to figure out what those right things are. And you know, at Super Speed, we've created not only our overspeed training protocols, but we've created now protocols for ground reaction force and sequencing and lag and all kinds of other things that you can implement into your program to really optimize what you're working on to really take all these all the speed training to the next level. Yeah, and I think that's that's a great message and, and something, again, we, we want to put all of that into one place for you guys. Yeah, well, we're really excited. So, I mean, the first part of this, we're going to get all of the baseline data. We're going to get, we're going to figure out what you need to do. Right. The second part, which is going to be coming down the road here, we're going to put all of that together and give you that comprehensive protocol right. and program 
made up only of our super speed training protocols. It's all going to be stuff that you can find, you know, at superspeedgolf.com or on our new app that's coming out. And then we're going to test all of that afterwards yeah. and see what kind of gains you actually are going to get out of these programs. Amazing. I mean, this, this lab's incredible. Tell us a little bit about some of the technology you've got at your disposal here, Tyler, because this is, this is truly one of the most sort of technologically advanced labs for this specific thing anywhere in the world. Yeah, I mean, I'm incredibly fortunate here. Uh, I have a lot of support from my university to, to kind of get this equipment and do this research I've been doing now for, you know, two or three years. Um, and I think you are right. I think there's a lot of different ways we can attack a golf swing uh, and attack analyzing movements. Yep. For what I'm doing in terms of the body, this is uh, pretty much top-notch state-of-the-art. So kind of what you see is, uh, you know, traditional force plates, which I think you see that in a lot of labs. And so we'll throw you on the force plates and, yep. and see how those work. Uh, you know, I have a TrackMan simulator so that we can look at all the impact physics and kind of what you're doing with the club when it comes into impact. And then I have the benefit of actually having two different camera systems, which right. I think is pretty unique, where I have cameras that actually will look at markers that I can place on your club. They'll watch how your club moves through the mm -hmm. swing and allow me to detect the different positions of your swing. But I also have a markerless system. And right. this is where the new technology of biomechanics is really moving. And there's lots of markerless systems out there. Right. right? There's the ones that are trying to go from a phone base yep. to a couple of phones. Well, I have the benefit of I get eight cameras that are simultaneously collecting video. Mm -hmm. And they will then put together in their algorithm all those videos in kind of one kind of shoot. Mm -hmm. And then I can build your skeleton model without ever putting a marker on you and get, you know, high quality, high level research data without having to, to go through all the tedious nature of markering you up. So that's a system that is, is kind of new to the world of research biomechanics. Yeah. Uh, I've been in it for about a decade and this is kind of the future of where it's going. But for golf, kind of markerless motion capture, this is uh, probably top-notch, uh, you know, in the country, maybe in the world for that yeah, kind of stuff. without a doubt. Mike, tell us a little bit about how Superspeed has evolved, kind of with the relationship with, with Dr. Tiley here in, in the lab, and how have this sort of, how has the program evolved and some of the products evolved through that? Yeah, absolutely. What Tyler's been able to do for us is kind of take some of the in-house R&D that we've been able to do in our products and especially on our training programs and just take it to the next level. Right. And that's allowed us to be able to fine tune some of those protocols to make that even better. Because again, our goal at Superspeed is keeping this simple. Yeah. I know this isn't gonna look like that today, but our goal is to keep it as simple as possible yeah. for the user right. so that they're, not, they're getting the most out of the time that they're spending practicing golf, practicing speed, trying to get better. It doesn't take four hours a day of practice yeah. to see huge gains. You can see huge gains doing a simple five minute drill if it's the right thing for you. Rotational sequencing drills, lag and wrist mechanics drills, trying to optimize downswing loading in the club. We tested all of our ball speed application protocols, which are one that we wanted to release at super speed for a long time. And we, all of our tour players have always done some type of a ball speed application protocol, which is really just taking the swing speed gains they're getting with air swings in our overspeed training and applying it to ball speed. I mean, that's where it counts, right? Like if you don't get more ball speed, you're not hitting it further. 100%. So th those protocols are extremely cool and, and Tyler's been instrumental in optimizing those for us. If I had to sum up what Tyler's done for us over the last four years, we knew our stuff was working. We right. knew people were getting good results. Tyler's been able to help us figure out exactly why it's happening. Yeah. And once you know why something's happening, you can expand on that and make it even better. Yeah, the validation of, of the products that you knew was working and, and you knew would help people is is really sort of, this is your playground mm -hmm. to, to show people. And, you know, a lot of terms and sort of some scientific buzz going on there, guys. And it's not our intention for you guys to have to soak that up. And you can, obviously, for those of you that are, are that way inclined. Um, but I think the purpose of this is to show you how easy it is for you guys to make these gains. You said it right, Mike, it's, it can be as little as five minutes a day. And I always go back to, that's why super speed really worked for me because it was a, a, a period of time in the day. It wasn't going to take me an hour. It wasn't going to take me a ton of time to do it. I could take my sticks. I could hit my, my own driver. And it was in a really manageable amount of time in the day. And I think with the app, we're going to help even sort of condense that even further where people have the right direction. Don't waste your time doing the wrong thing, you know, for an hour. Mm -hmm. Just do the right amount of time doing the right thing and that's what's going to lead to the most improvement. I mean, my base philosophy as a golf coach 
is to get the biggest result out of my players with the least amount of input from me. Exciting. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to get to work. We've, we've got all this equipment. I'm dying to kind of get working. We're going to do some, some screening, some pre-testing just to see, uh, again, where my deficiencies are. And, and we're going to go through this as a step-by-step -step process. So uh, really excited to take you guys on the journey. Stay with us. And I think you'll really get a lot from this session. Okay guys, so we are going to do the first sort of of the testing protocols in here. We're going to do the screen. All right, that's our main physical assessment. That's pretty, okay? that's pretty easy. And that, that's the physical assessment you can go through in our app and can get you some basic, you know, supporting physical fitness programs to look at some of those things that might not be, you know, maybe opportunities for improvement. Keys overall takeaways that I had here, you know, the ankle eversion ankle thing stuff. is yeah, I think yeah. a big deal because that ankle eversion happens right away yeah. creating lateral force in the backswing. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Um, and we saw a little bit of like mobility restriction, just a slight yep. bit when you, especially when you're going through the downswing with your upper body. Yeah. So be curious to see how that turns out a little bit with the shoulders, especially mm -hmm. that trail shoulder. You know, so we have a couple of things on that list there that could have some correlation to what we see over on, on the 3d and the force. We're going to go through one more thing with you today because we have you here in this gym and this lab. Yeah. And I always like to see power output if I can get it. So we're going to go through that here in a minute and we're going to do that with a medicine ball and some throws and it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. Love it. Okay. Guys, we're going to get over to the, uh, the, the power test. I'm really excited to do this, Mike. I think this is something that for me is, is going to be a, a sort of big demonstration as to where the baseline is. And obviously when we get back to the lab, how much we can increase that output. All right, so we've just been through the test, Tyler. We have brought out the first of our many toys here yep. in your little playground in the lab here. So uh, tell us a little bit about this piece of kit. Yeah, so we're going to jump into some power testing. And as we look at power sources of the body, we've got your legs, we've got the core, we've got the arms. And so we're going to do three tests to look at that. So right. jump mat here is basically just using some basic equations to figure out how long you're in the air. Okay. And we can calculate how high you jump and really start to tease out what's the power potential that you have in your legs right. so that we can understand, again, either a room for some improvement sure. or a place where we might start to see some things in your actual data in the golf swing that might correlate with what you do in a jump test. Okay, so you're just gonna hop, step on the mat. Yep. And you're just gonna jump as high as you can. Am I okay saying your vertical jump height here? Yes. Or you wanna keep it a secret? No, so, we, we okay. can definitely, okay. uh, definitely let it. Uh, 17.6. Okay. So 17.6 in terms of a power test, and again, correlated with some of the things we might see in some of those vertical force productions. Yep. And so for me, it's more just thinking, okay, here's a number. It might be an area where I'd say, man, I'd love to see that number crest over maybe 20. Wow. Um, yeah, but yeah. I want to now look at your vertical forces when you swing and start to see that as maybe, could it explain some of the types of things we see in your swing? Okay. So Very cool. Okay, that's the jump. All right, Tyler, test number two. This is called a sit up and throw. Now we're gonna use an eight pound med ball and then your legs are gonna kind of be almost like you're gonna do a sit up. So pop okay, up, yeah, feet ahead. flat, yep. exactly. And then you're gonna take this ball, you're gonna go above your head and as you do a sit up, you're just gonna throw this ball so and there, try and go as far as you possibly can. And then yep, launch. As far as you can. Ah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Ah, a little bit that's better. Hard. Let's try one more. Nice. Okay. Let's measure this one out. Yeah, that's not, okay, that's that's not as easy as you made it look, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> okay. 15 okay. and a half. Awesome. Last one. Last right? one. Again, we're power up, right? Okay. So legs, chest. Now we're going to see what you can do with your arms. Basically, you're just going to kind of do exactly like a kind of a chest pass. Yeah. Kind of throw that way again for maximum distance. Got it. Ah. Okay. Gotta keep throwing until it's no longer farther. 
All right, that Pencil was short. shorter there, yep. so we'll uh, get a measurement there. So that kind of completes our power profile, right? We've got all three of those tests, and yep. now we can kind of look at some of the things that you do in your golf swing, where your power sources are, correlate that with these physical tests, and again, just gives us ways to really target the training mm -hmm. we're going to do with you. Very fascinating to do all three because test one and two didn't feel like I had leverage, if mm -hmm. you like. So from the ground, I didn't feel like I had much leverage. On the, on the sort of throw, I didn't feel like I had much leverage. But on the chest pass, I felt like I had some leverage yeah. behind that one. So good things to learn about your, your body and your sequence and how you recruit that power. Yep, and this also allows you then in, in some of the other components of training, right? We're, we're trying to create something simple that you could do based on these physical yep. tests. Again, if you're someone who likes to incorporate high-level gym training, power, strength training, yeah. now we have some things that we can target and really kind of help increase the ceiling of potential for you for club head speed. Okay. Guys, definitely some work to be done, that's for sure. And I think that's the point of doing these tests. It, it creates that baseline, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whatever it is, it is a starting point for us to build upon. Obviously, we're trying to kind of lift, the, lift these levels from the base and, and get to work. Yeah, love Great it. stuff. Okay, on to the lab. All right, Tyler, time to get to work. We're in yes. the uh, back to the lab in the bay. We've had a look at some of the speed output tests, uh, power output tests. And yeah, I think for me, definitely to see some of those uh, tests, two of them felt not great. One of them felt, uh, you know, like I had a little bit more output. Mike was just telling me off camera, very normal for, uh -huh. for yeah. sort of male golfers, 30 to 50. I'm right smack bang in the yes. middle of that. Yeah. So uh, no surprises to a degree? Yeah, no, not at all. And, and I think what we want to see now, right, is like what happens in the golf swing, Yeah. right? Like what can we look at, take that information from the physical function, look at what you're doing in the golf swing, and then kind of start to really piece that puzzle together. But, you know, so far, yeah, no surprises. No surprises. Excited to see you on this process mm -hmm. and kind of see what the, the tech says. Love it. So our process here is we're, we're going to actually get to take some, some golf swings now. Um, golf course swings. Yep. So, and that's something that I find quite interesting because I'm quite significantly quicker in the bay than on the course. Okay. So if I take quad on the course, I know I'm probably a 156 to 158 ball speed guy. If I'm in the bay, I can be quite easily 164 to 166. Okay. So there's quite a delta in there. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting you bring that up because I've been looking at a lot of that on course. And, and to be perfectly honest, um, I don't want to see there be a big gap between those things. Me neither. Because I think <laughs> if you have the capacity to swing 165, 167, yeah. and you have the benefit of you can take your tech out there and see it, right? I'll have golfers take out just the little PRGR radar sure. for club and ball speed. And if I see in the lab they're 105 and 150, mm -hmm. and then on the driving range they got to 107 and yeah. 155, and then they get on the course and they're 101 and 145, I'm yep. thinking... I want, I want you to feel comfortable on the course generating club head speed. Right. So typically what I like to do in my lab at least is bring them in and say, okay, what's your stock comfortable driver? Let's see what that speed is. And then let's push the speed. Right. One, so that I can see what they actually do with their body to generate those higher speeds. Yep. But two, it's to see what that gap is, mm -hmm. right? If I see a gap of, you know, seven, eight mile per hour jump when they start swinging you know, a, a fast speed, right. I'm thinking, man, I'd love, like you're just leaving so much in the tank mm -hmm that I would give missing one more fairway if I could hit every drive 10 yards farther. And I'd love to get into a little bit of that conversation with yourself and Mike later, because I see a lot of that, that people swing very carefully, very much within themselves. And golfers have always been told, you know, slow the swing speed down. And, you know, don't, you, you know, we don't want to hit it offline. We need to be okay with hitting it a bit offline. Yeah. You know, if we're going to play this game to a higher level and we see the correlation with distance and, and handicap, Right, it is every every study you ever want to look at, the lowest handicap swing at the fastest speed, and then as the handicap goes up, the speed goes yep, down. For sure, for sure, and it's one of those things where I can't have you lose balls off a tee, right? Yeah. I, I got to eliminate penalty, penalty strokes. Penalty strokes. Yeah. But if I miss the fairway a little bit, that's okay, right? Those fairways hit is such an overrated stat. Yeah. You know, if you can not have penalty strokes, mm -hmm. hit the ball far, those strokes gained with the driver are going right. to start to climb up and your potential to score low is, is just going to increase drastically. I love it. So, okay. Yeah, let's let's get after it. So I'm going to have you hop on here. Okay, so the idea is I'm going to get you just set up kind of middle-ish of the force plate. Set your driver down where you would set it down if there was a ball there. Uh, and then this will be a chance, Ian, while well, I'll be your uh, kind of research assistant. So I'm going to have you take about a half a step towards me just so we get a little bit more. Yep, perfect. Okay. 
So this is gonna be kind of our point right here where we're gonna throw this. I'm gonna put down this piece of tape. Once I start actually collecting data, um, I, we've got to put this kind of T and ball in the same possession every time. Because yeah. my system will know where this ball is, and then that allows me to detect impact, and got I can it. kind of collect all my data there. But because this is a little bit of a unique setup on the plates and things like yeah. that, I'm just going to have you take maybe, you know, three, four swings. Just kind of get comfortable with this setup with yeah. your driver, okay? Got just it. these stock kind of driver swings. Perfect, okay. That's good. So let's hit one or two balls, see how you feel, and then yep. we'll fire up the data, fire up the tech, and uh, kind of see what it says. Perfect. This is where, uh, Ian, right, uh, coming to Utah, yeah. uh, you kind of like some of the things. You had mentioned kind of <laughs> ball speed, so 157.5 was the ball speed. But okay. when you're playing at 4,800 feet, uh, that carry is a 285 and rolls out to 312. So I'll take uh, it. come on, come on back down and play some golf here. I definitely would love to. Uh, that's interesting. That that swing is for the first driver swing of the day is 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 pretty quick for me. I would say I normally start the day a little bit lower than that. So that's that's actually decent. And now what we're gonna do is let's hit a couple where we collect data at that same kind of speed you were feeling right there. Yep. And then we'll do one or two where we just kind of push the speed a little bit. Love it. Okay. Okay, and I always like to see, you know, it's kind of nice actually in these data collections, sometimes stuff will come out where I'm seeing kind of the shots I want to get. So that first one you hit, mm -hmm. and I don't know how it felt for you, but that first one you felt you're smiling, so that first one maybe wasn't your best yeah. you shot. Second one a lot more solid, okay. ball speed a lot higher. And now I almost have a little bit of a comparison of maybe what wasn't an ideal mm -hmm. versus what was an ideal. So now we're going to do, because we've got two there, I want this one to be, I just want to see what your body does to create speed. Cool. So we'll get set up and we'll get one there just to see what you do to, to get after it. So again, in a, in a full-fledged research study, I might be taking you through 10, 15, 20 swings. Yep. What's interesting is you see a pretty good representation after just kind of a few swings, right? Mm -hmm. You can at least see how that person's moving, how they generate force. Yep. So now we've got enough where I can step in, get in all the nitty gritty details of the data, rebuild your skeleton model, mm -hmm. see what the club's doing, see how you're pushing on the ground. And that will allow us to kind of fine tune some of the training we're gonna take you through next um, to really maximize your potential. I love that this was a blind test as well, which is super uncomfortable. I can't even tell you how, as a control freak, super type A, to not see a projection of numbers and not even be able to see what you can see in the yep. screen. You can't believe the fits I'm having about yeah. over here. When I'm looking at club head speed as my number one outcome, I don't want them to really think through how fast it was, where the ball went, and then it gets into their mind, oh, I pulled that one a little, I'm gonna scale back. I just want them to swing freely, kind of let me have all the control over the data. So I appreciate you letting me take control today. Not at all, it's cool. Um, I enjoy doing these types of tests because I'm normally the, the person on the other side of the yep. screen. So to be on this side being the guinea pig is a lot of fun as well. Awesome, well yeah, I'll, he I'll head into that data and uh, let's see what we've got. Can't wait to take a look. All right, Tyler, another fancy toy you've got <laughs> for me here. So guys, you you'll be familiar with, with force plates with some of the brands out there. We're gonna use these uh, smart to move plate style. You really like these because obviously they're portable. The, yeah. the application here you love. Yeah, I mean, not, not everyone can have a lab like I have. I recognize that, right? Um, and so I, what I'm excited about in the world of biomechanics, like I'm not that person who's sitting here in my lab thinking, I own all this technology. I don't want that going out to the masses. Like I'm excited about the opportunity yeah. for force place to become more portable, mm -hmm. cheaper, but still co collecting enough good data to inform decisions, right. markerless motion capture systems. Like it's an exciting time to be in the world of biomechanics. And my thought is I want to be involved in as much of that technology as I can yeah. so that I can know what we can use and shouldn't use and what parts of it. So yeah, this is a, a portable option. Uh, that's just going to measure force, no motion data, mm -hmm. uh, video force through an iPad and okay. uh, allows us to, to really very quickly kind of assess motion. Um, so as opposed to having to run things through a lot of advanced algorithms and my whole computer system, uh, this is just a really quick, quick way to look at the way you utilize the ground. So uh, we'll have you hop on. Okay. Uh, again, kind of feet uh, somewhat in the middle there. 
set that driver down where you'd normally have it. I'm gonna take you again, have you take like a quarter step towards me. Perfect. So we're gonna set it kind of down in there, okay? And then the only difference is going to be here is that as you get set up, I'm just going to have you rock back and forth on your feet. Gotcha. Um, once you're kind of set up in a position so that we can get your foot pattern on Got this it. one. Right. So you can get kind of set up to the ball. So you can get set up to okay, the ball. Set yep. To get set up okay. to the ball. Okay. And then you're just going to, yeah, rock back and forth on your feet. Heel to toe, heel to toe, heel to toe. Perfect. And then, yeah, when you're ready, fire away. Awesome. So again, this is the instantaneous of it, right? This is what, is what allows me to go in really quickly, mm -hmm. start to look at the way that you generate forces, look at where you're pushing on each foot, kind of look at the way your force vectors travel back and forth, how you load to the trail, how you send force to the lead side. I can look at those magnitudes and again, start to see where those places where I can really target some of the things we're going to work with you, maximize these forces, maximize the way you swing a club. Yeah, I think this is one of the tests that if I've done this in the past, it always seems to give out some information that we have some massive opportunities within that. Do you see that a lot with, uh, with, with the people you test yeah, with? Yeah, I mean, it, almost every golfer I get on these plates mm -hmm. or in something where I can instantly analyze stuff, it's like, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at yours really quickly and I'm just automatically, I'm thinking, cool, I want Ian to push a little bit harder off the lead leg. Yep. I want your vertical yeah. force to go up because it's lower than where I want it to be. Right. I can instantaneously start thinking about the drills mm -hmm. that could help you feel that. I'm thinking about your jump test that yeah. you just did in the lab there that I would love to be a little bit higher. And just, yeah, it's the opportunities are almost always there to make some really significant improvements. I think, guys, when I do this type of test, it, it, this takes me back to the early days of the launch monitor, like 2006 was the very first time I had a track man for my own use to take out on tour to, uh, to fit people. And we were coming, we were sort of seeing correlations on delivery and things like that that really helped people improve. We saw that hitting up on the driver was massively important. Frederick Tuxon told us that. No one kind of believed him that you needed two different golf swings. And I kind of feel like we're still in a little bit of those early days with this stuff, that this has its own set of markers, optimized markers that we need to learn from. So we need to see all these obviously spikes in the right places, the same way that we knew that swinging from the inside and on the up was beneficial for high lodge, low spin. For sure. It's a great example because I think in the past, the only way to get this type of measurement is to come into a biomechanics lab in a studio. More and more options are getting portable. And I think as we put it more in the hands of individuals, you know, how does this stuff correlate to club fitting? Yeah. How does this stuff correlate to all the things we do? And instead of having a few high-end golfers that are enjoying this, mm -hmm. it's every golfer who comes That's in for a fitting yeah. gets on something like this. And all of a sudden we start getting these huge databases. Mm -hmm. And I think the ability to inform decisions and really understand, hey, these are what forces correlate to different things in the swing. Yeah. This is what correlates to a speed. Um, again, like that's going to be an exciting thing to be a part of. Uh, absolutely. This is the most exciting thing about being here doing this with you guys is what will come subsequently from this. I mean, you're doing incredible, incredible work. And you said my favorite thing of the day so far is that you said like, you're not doing this research to, sh to hold it in here in this room. You want it to go out to the world. And that was the, the philosophy behind our YouTube channel when we first started. We felt like we, there were some things around club fitting that had to be shared if everyone on a grand scale was gonna be able to go out there and understand the difference between a good one and a bad one. If you can self-diagnose that this doesn't seem right, this, this kind of length of club for me doesn't, you know, doesn't seem to be working very well and have a reference point. And you, you're doing amazing work uh, with your research doing the same stuff. Yeah, well, now that we know how you move kind of golf swing wise, right, this really gives us an opportunity to start to go and attack this stuff and then get you back over here and uh, see what we've improved. This is gonna be awesome. Okay, on to the next test. Yeah. You're pulling toys out of <laughs> every cupboard in the lab here. Tyler, this is, uh, this is wild. Yeah, so th what this, do we have here? Yeah, this is a fun one. This is uh, from Sensor Edge. And there's a lot of debate on what golfers do with the hands in the swing. Mm -hmm. And I think we talk a lot about angles and sure. motions. And that's something they look at a lot. But grip pressure is something that I'm really become curious in. Um, you know, meaning, you know, if, if I ask a golfer, scale of one to 10, how hard do you feel like you're squeezing a club? Mm -hmm. You might say... I feel like I'm at about a six. Okay, so you say six. I might ask another guy that they say three, and another yep. guy says nine. Well, unfortunately, that's going to all be relative to your actual grip strength that you sure. have. 
So being able to actually not just measure how much static grip strength you can have, like a dynamometer where we squeeze, and mm -hmm. we'll test that too, right. um, but also to see dynamically what you actually do during the swing. Got it. Right? When do you peak? Um, what hand is applying more pressure mm -hmm. at different points of the swing? How does that relate to your overall maximum pressure? And this is the kind of technology that allows us to put data, I think, to all those things that we've just kind of questioned or thought is occurring in the golf swing. I mean, as we talk about this relative to club fitting, the grip being the only part of the golf club that we actually you know, are in contact with is vital, it's massive. And I think there's a real correlation right now or a movement away from small grips, mm -hmm. standard, even standard size grips. Yeah. You see reduced taper becoming much more popular. Very interesting that this test grip is is large yep right so you know that's fascinating and i think something that as an industry in club fitting we need to learn more about what does it mean to apply the right amount of pressure in terms of control in this golf club yeah and i'm not i'm not the one who who saw this in data sets with this the company who's who developed this have been collecting a ton of data right and the one thing that stood out to me that he said as it relates to club fitting was the idea that a lot of times in the past we've maybe fit grip based off hand size sure and he said the much more accurate way to do it would be off of strength mm -hmm. and how they can apply pressure in the swing because he said we do a disservice to some of our small-handed individuals who might also have weak grip saying, well, let's put you in that smaller grip. So it's interesting that you say yeah. bigger grips are becoming some of the trend that you're seeing. Yep. That would correlate really nicely with what we see in amateur golfers, which is that most of them lack grip strength. Our customers will be delighted to hear that because that, that is a huge part of line inside our studios is that we do not fit grips to hand size. Yeah. It, is, it, is not, it is not what we need to do in order to control that golf club. It's all about controlling the pressure. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. So this is going to allow us to dynamically do it. So I'm going to walk you through okay. kind of a test here. So the first thing we're going to do is take a calibration. Okay. So get your, take your normal grip normal on grip. the club. Okay. And I'm just going to raise it up this way. Okay. Okay. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep your hands in this position the entire time. Got it. And the system's gonna walk you through a prompt of squeezing with both hands as hard as you possibly can, yep. squeezing with your lead hand as hard as you possibly can, and then squeezing with your trail hand as hard as you can. But always just keep this same grip yep. throughout that process. Gotcha. Okay, so we're gonna come right in here. Okay, so both hands on. Squeeze everything you got, everything you got. Squeeze as hard as you can. Okay, now release. Now just lead hand. You're gonna squeeze, 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 squeeze. Everything you got, everything you got. Perfect. Now trail hand, squeeze everything you got, give it everything you got. Perfect. Okay. What this allows me to do, because we might grip a golf club a little bit differently than we might uh, do a test on a handheld dynamometer. So right. now I can actually, and what I've been doing a lot lately is seeing what players, what's the, what's the relationship sure. between what I can do on a static dynamometer mm -hmm. versus what I can do on this club. And already in like nine or 10 golfers, I'm seeing some really fascinating things where you might have golfers that have a lot of static grip strength, mm -hmm. but they don't apply very much to the club when they're doing it statically. They, they can't almost do it circularly. Sure. And so anyway, it's, that's, that's a little bit of the weeds, but yeah. again, this is the kind of tech that I think will be exciting to learn more, do more. So now what we can do is we actually get to take a swing. Okay. okay? So we're gonna set you up here and you can just take kind of a normal swing Perfect. Let's do one more. Okay. Perfect. Okay. That's all we need, right? And now I can hop in here and look at some of the ways that you apply pressure when it peaks, when it comes down. Uh, common patterns that we see in really good players are it tends to peak really, really high kind of early in that transition. Yeah. Right? You're trying to make that club head change directions. Right. And then I think almost a little bit contrary to belief as you come into impact, it's almost like that pressure starts to go down mm -hmm. quite a bit. So I, I saw something on Twitter the other day where they showed, I think it was a video of Freddie Couples. And his, his, you know, it's like, man, his hands are so loose. Look at him through impact. And yeah, through impact, he can probably get away with not having much pressure there because he's hitting the ball square every single time. Right. Whereas during that transition time, he's already applied that pressure, mm -hmm. made the club move the way he wants. And then he can almost lighten up that pressure a little right. bit into impact. Very so. cool. Yeah, I mean, I think grip pressure is a fascinating one. Uh, in our world, as I say, of, of club fitting and even just thinking about where the grip pressure is applied in its maximum force relative to what do you want the shaft profile to be? Do we want something that, ha if we have massive amounts of pressure and transition, we probably want something a little bit stiffer in the butt section and how we, uh, you know, we deflect the shaft, how we offend the shaft is 
it, we can probably learn a lot of things from grip pressure. Oh yeah, for sure. And, and like you said, using that technology and data to start to see how they correlate, I, I think our opportunity to do really high, high level club fitting yeah. and even get more out of what we're already doing is, again, it's, it's gonna be cool to use. It's exciting. You can, uh, you can see the golf geeks like us light up <laughs> when we start talking about this stuff, guys, because as an industry, where are the next gains gonna come from for you guys? We've gotta keep sort of going through this process and refining this process in order to give you guys opportunities in order to improve your own golf games. And that's why testing like this is so meaningful. People coming together from different industries, coming from club fitting, Tyler from his sort of biomechanics and research background and Mike and the super speed golf team with the research they're doing and, and from teaching and all the, all the walks of life that they've been in. It really is cool to see people come together to try and develop, you know, better protocols and, and systems in order for people to improve. Yeah, for sure. It's very cool. All right, guys, we're on to the next step. Okay, so last grip uh, pressure test. So we just done the sensor edge, sensor edge uh, test with the club itself. Uh, this is more of a, a sort of static test. Yeah, again, if the theme of the day is the idea of like high, high-end technology, maybe not right. everyone has access okay. to versus like, I could go buy one of these off of Amazon for a couple hundred bucks and yeah. test some things. This is basically just looking at your static grip strength. Mm. So what is kind of the raw you know, kilograms that you can squeeze with? Because this ends up telling us a lot of information about some things about that player as it might relate to how they would use a grip. So Very cool. there are lots of ways that you can test this, lots of different body positions, and it's almost kind of depending upon the subgroup that you're comparing to, right. that's how you should test. Okay. So uh, I would say the, the people who will probably have the most data on this would be TPI. Okay. And when I read up in their test, I've done some of their testing, it tends to be kind of a position where you're kind of a little bit here, kind of in a little yep. bit of a golfish posture, mm -hmm. and we're just gonna squeeze as hard as we can. Gotcha. I set this on its smallest setting, mm -hmm. because again, is maybe more representative of how a grip would be, okay? So basically, you're gonna take this in your hand, yep. that golf posture, and you're just gonna crank on this as hard as you possibly can. We'll start uh, uh, right hand first, right hand? yeah, okay. that's totally fine. Okay, and just everything you got, just squeeze everything you got, everything you got, perfect. Okay, okay go. Bam, everything you got, perfect. And then I look at it, okay, here. Okay, not too shabby there. So yeah, you're about 55 kilograms, almost 120 pounds, okay. which is uh, it's extraordinary, actually. It's, it's really good. Is it really? Yeah. I would, yeah, really I would have honestly guessed that my grip strength was, was not good. Oh yeah, let's see, maybe, I mean, maybe, this, okay. uh, maybe your lead hand is the, the weak link. Okay. Again, that same process. Perfect, okay. Yeah, and here you're actually even a little bit more there. You're almost 60 kilograms on that. So a little bit over, you're almost 130 pounds there. So okay. what do those numbers mean? Yep. Uh, most amateur golfers might be in the 40 kilogram range. Uh, I actually did a study where I looked at about 120 of them mm -hmm. uh, and they came out to about kind of low 40s. Uh, PGA Tour players tend to be in that kind of 55 to 60 kilogram range. So this, again, if I'm looking at you from a grip strength standpoint, I'm thinking there's not a limitation here in terms of the strength that you have which maybe gives me the capacity to allow you to maybe do some things in your swing because I know you have the capacity to do it, right? A, a lot of these tests, whether it was the screening we were doing before or some of these tests I've done before in other settings, I've never done oh, really? grip testing ever. I have no idea whether it was good or bad or, or whatever that was. So, and, and having read obviously some of the stuff that you guys have been finding when I first got um, my grip squeeze. Uh -huh. yeah. I find this fascinating. Yeah. Uh, and I think you guys have found the same thing between whether it's long drive, PGA Tour, LPGA, yep. average golfers. There's really something in this grip pressure for sure. sort of scale high. Strength level. stuff. And yeah, and really what we see, like you would for sure be a unicorn in this situation. I mean, right, you have okay. a, an insane amount of grip strength. Mm -hmm. Most people, it's such an easy, quick way to assess. They come in and you see that 35 or 40 kilogram number pop up. Yep. You bring in a female golfer, an older golfer, and they're in kind of the mid to high 20s. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a huge limitation to club speed. Yep. It's going to be a limitation to some of the things they can do in transition sure. with, the, with the club face. Huge limitation in them coming through rough. Mm -hmm. you know, those are the kind of things that, what a quick way to assess that and say, Hey, here's some low-hanging fruit that we could attack and hopefully get better. Wow, wow. Okay, I mean, you can guys can see how many different angles we've got going on here. I mean, it's it's not difficult to see why you guys are finding massive gains with the people you're working based on all of the different areas that you can attack at any one time. It's not like you're just going down one path and going, okay, hopefully this works. 
you know, you're coming at it with a multi, multi-dimensional approach to improvement, which, which is awesome. Uh, and and I, as I say, I'm learning things about my sort of strengths and weaknesses that I really didn't know before. Yeah, so yeah, this is great. very, very cool. All right, guys, that is a, a comprehensive round of testing. That was awesome. From being obviously in here next door doing our, our, uh, our screening and, and power tests. Um, that was that was. That was, was intense. Else. Yeah, yeah there's a, a lot. lot. It's a lot, and again, a lot goes into what we're trying to do to to program. You know, those uh, those pro players that we work with, mm-hmm. right? We've been able to do this kind of testing on them, see those kind of things that they do to really target their training. But we're excited about the potential to kind of take that and what we've learned in all these years of researching it to actually put it into the hands of kind of every super speed user, right. so that they can kind of do some simple things themselves and almost get a little bit of this experience and then really kind of target their training. Yeah. My, your mind must have been going there as you see the different tests going on. Okay, he's okay here. He's got a bit of deficiency here. I can see where we're going to be going and building out in your own mind. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's where my mind goes as a coach. Like, I love getting the data, but what I really love is putting the puzzle together to yeah. be able to help you do the right drills and the right programs to be able to get forward. Right. I think you're going to see some exciting stuff on that. But, I mean, just to recap a little here, you know, Physical screening. Yep. Okay, that's available in our new app, so everybody can do that at home. Right. Uh, we got some 3D biomechanics motion capture mm-hmm. uh, on this awesome Qualysis system and with Thea and everything that Tyo has. I mean, that's fantastic and yeah. cool. We also took some of that on Sportsbox AI, which yep. is an app everybody can get at home. Right. You know, we got some great, you know, detailed 3D force um, on Tyler's system. Also got some of that on those smart to move portable plates. That's mm-hmm. a little less accessible, but. I mean, force data is force data, and it's really good to have. Yep. Um, we got some grip strength data. We got some actual grip pressure data throughout the swing. I mean, so much cool stuff. So, yeah. you know, I think next step here for us uh, is going to be putting all this together and giving you some programs to start to really you know, make your strengths shine and some of those deficiencies get better. Yeah, and this is where the fun begins. It's great to do all the tests and all the uh, sort of the discovery process as to what we're going to find. But for, for the player, the, the fun bit is start to see the differences, right? Start to apply some of these, you know, programs and some of the theories to see the, the performance change. And obviously that's what we want you guys to be able to see that the app is going to offer you guys in your own development and own improvement. So as you work on all of the results that the app shows you from the testing into obviously all the speed training protocols, et cetera, et cetera, there's going to be some some significant gains to be found here. So I can't wait to go on to the next part of the testing, guys. This is going to be a lot of fun to start to apply the data that we've just found.